Hello and welcome to my video on multi-track recording on a Yamaha 463 for dummies. What I'm going to try to do is take this topic of multi-track recording and make it simple and easy to understand. Here's a question. How do I play the E463 keyboard and record myself and get the maximum amount of music out of the keyboard? There are two ways to record a song on an E463 keyboard. The first is audio recording, and the second is multi-track recording. With an audio recording, you can play and record a style and one voice. In a multi-track recording, you can play and record a style and up to five different voices. So this is going to be an introduction to multi-track recording on the Yamaha PSR E463 keyboard. Now the first thing you need to do is start by selecting what style you want to record. And then the next thing is go ahead and set the tempo on your keyboard and then set your transpose if you plan to change the key. However, I recommend that you don't transpose, that you just record everything in 00, zero which is the key of C. So on your keyboard, over here at number one, that's where you're going to set your style. And then you'll come and tap the tempo button and set the tempo of your song. And then finally, the transpose button is up here. However, I recommend do not transpose, and I'll explain why a little bit later. The next thing you need to do is sit down and plan out your recording. You can record up to five different tracks, so that's five different instruments. So here you see that I've taken a piece of paper and I have decided exactly what five instruments I'm going to record into each of those five tracks. And you want this all planned out well in advance. You don't want to be sitting there uh, trying to hem and haw and figure out, well, what do I do next? You need to know, am I going to record three instruments or four or five? Have that all well thought out before you start recording anything. So looking at the track control buttons, tracks one, two, three, four, and five, these can be used to record any of the over 758 different voices that come in this keyboards. Tracks one, two, three, four, and five, any voice, any of the 558 voices can be recorded into one of these five tracks. Track A can only be used to record your style. This is the this track is reserved exclusively just to record the style. Okay? That one marked A. And what I recommend when you're ready to start recording, record the style track first. That's track A. Because your style track it's going to set the tempo and it's going to set the chord progression for the entire song. So always start out by recording the style. And that can only be done in track A. This one. Before you begin to play and record your song, you need to clear all of the tracks of the user song you're going to record into. Here's what might happen. Let's say that you record a style in track A 
and you record a, a drum in track one, a guitar in track two, and a piano in track three, and that's it. There could be some instruments and some recordings in track four and five, and unless you get rid of all of those, those are going to end up in your recording. So you need to zero out and eliminate all of the recordings in the song before you begin. And I'll show you how to do that. So you press the song button and then use the rotary dial to select the user song that you are going to use to record your song into. Then hold down track one button as you simultaneously press and hold down track A. So press one and hold it and press track A and hold it. So hold both of these keys down and when you do that you wipe out all of the previous recordings in all six tracks. And that's very important. You don't want anything hanging around left over from some previous recorded song that you may not even know about. So I always start by blanking out all six tracks before I begin to record. So how do you record a track. Let's say I'm all set to go. I've made all my decisions. I know exactly which voice I'm going to put in which track. So what you want to do is press and hold the record button. So you're holding record and then reach down and press one of the six track buttons to select which track you want to record into. So you press and hold down record and then reach over and press one of these buttons to indicate which track do you want to record into. Got it? It's that simple. So let's go live to the E463 keyboard and record a multi-track song. Here we are at the E463 keyboard and I'm ready to record my multi-track song. So I have pressed the song button and I have dialed up user song number two, user two. And I've already gone in and I've wiped out and zeroed out all of the tracks. And once again to do that, I hold down track one and track A simultaneously and that allowed me to zero out all six of the tracks so there's nothing in there. All right, I've already gone in and I figured out exactly what voice or what instrument I want to play in each of the tracks. And I've decided to use um, a style called BB Medium, which is style 090. It's a big band, medium fast. And, uh, it sounds like this. Now I'm going to turn off the first two tracks because I don't want their drum and their bass. Okay, so I'm ready to record that. And once again, the style can only be recorded in track A. So what I'm going to do in just a second is I'm going to reach up, press and hold the record as I press the A button down here in the track. And then I will start playing the style and I'll record, oh, I don't know, a few seconds of the style in track A. I don't want to do a whole song. And by the way, I'm not doing a real song. I'm just going to make up something so I don't have to worry about copyright violations. Okay, so let's see. Yep, that's what I want it to sound like. So I'm ready to record the style in track A. And I reach out and I press and hold record and then press A. Ready? Record A. And it says recording. 
Here we go. And now it says writing. Still saying writing. So it's now storing the style in track A. And that's done. Now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to record the drums in track one. And I've decided to use room kit uh, 238. So it's voice two, Three, eight. I like that. Okay, I'm going to use these two. All right, so I'm ready to record my drum in track one. So I reach out and I'll press and hold record and hit track one and it will start playing the style as I record the track. Okay, here we go. Okay, and I press the stop and it's now writing track number one. So I have the style in track A, I have the drums in track one. Now I want a bass guitar, a voice zero five four. Okay, and I'm going to put that in track two. So I press record, hit two, and when I hit the first key, it starts recording. Ready? Record, two, play. hit the stop and now I am writing or saving that bass. So I have in track A 
the style. In track one, the drum. In track two, the bass guitar. In track three, I'm going to put a piano. So I'm going to go to my voice, zero, zero, three, which is a bright, a bright piano. And I'll be recording that in track three. Okay, ready? I'm going to press and hold record as I press three. And when I hit the keys, it starts recording. Ready? Record three. Okay, track A, style, track one, drums, track two, bass guitar, track three, piano. Track four is going to be a jazz guitar, so that is voice 044. Okay, so I'm going to press record four and record the guitar in track four. And it starts recording when I hit the keys. Ready? Record. Four. Here we go. Okay, stop. I'm almost done. I want a jazz, an alto saxophone will be tra in track five. So I hit my voice and it's uh, voice 100. Oops, it's still writing. Voice 100, alto sax. <laughs> And I'm going to put that in track five. Ready? Here we go. Record and hit five. When I hit the keyboard, it starts recording. Press and hold record. Hit five. It says recording. <laughs> And that's it. I have now recorded six tracks.
style in track A, drum set in track 1, bass guitar in track 2, piano in track 3, jazz guitar in track 4, alto sax in track 5. And it sounds like this. <laughs> Okay, so maybe that's not a hit song, but at least I wanted you to get the idea. This is, this is really not that difficult. So you can have up to six tracks, five different voices in tracks one through five. Remember, track A is always reserved for just the style. Now that I have it in stored in the internal memory up here in song user number two, I'm now going to take that and transfer that into my USB thumb drive. Because in the internal memory, I can only have 10 songs. But in the thumb drive, I can store 100 songs. So let's now turn to transferring the song, which is user two, into the thumb drive. You can only record and save 10 songs in the internal memory of the E463 keyboards. And these songs are from 31 to 40 or they could be indicated as user song one through 10. That's it, you can't save any more than 10 songs in the internal memory of your keyboard. So that begs the question, well, how can I save more than 10 songs I've recorded? And the answer is store them out into a USB thumb drive. How many songs can I put on a thumb drive? You can store 100, 10 times as many songs as you can store inside the memory of your keyboard. Well, how do I save one of my recorded songs out to a USB thumb drive? What's that process look like? Let me step you through that. You could go to your owner's manual and on page 73 and 74, it will tell you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to do that anyway. I'm going to assume that A, you don't have the manual, or B, you've looked at the manual and it's just a little too complicated. So here's how to do that. Here's how to take a song that you've saved in one of the 10 memory slots and get it stored out on that thumb drive where you can store a hundred songs. Number one, press and hold the function button right here. Okay, so you press and hold it down for a couple of seconds. And then next, you're going to press this category button. And as you do, you will cycle through different things and what you're looking for is save SMF and this stands for save standard MIDI format. You need to be on this page and you just keep pressing this it may be four or five or six seven times just keep clicking it until you get this message. When you do then press the execute button which is right here. 
So you click this, keep clicking until it says save SMF. And when you see this, come over here and press the execute button. By the way, you're going to keep pressing this a lot. This is the first one. Right there, it says execute. Next, use your rotary dial and select which user song you want to save to the thumb drive. So with your rotary dial, you can sit here and, and dial from user 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Whichever uh, user song you've recorded into, select that with the rotary dial. And when you find it, when you see it on the screen, press the execute button. So this is the second time you've pressed it. Okay. Next, rotate the dial and select what number you want to use to store your song into the thumb drive. So as you sit here and, and spin the dial, it'll go song one, two, three, four, five, one, 10, 20, 30. You can go all the way up to song 100. So using the rotary dial, select which song. Let's say, let's say I've already stored 20 songs on my thumb drive. So I would dial this up to song 21. And when I get there, you can guess what you'll do and press the execute button. Okay, what happens next? When you do, a little message is going to pop up on the screen and it's going to say, save okay. So it's asking you, are you ready to save this? And you know what's coming. Press the execute button to save the song, okay? So you press this execute button four times. You just click, 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 click. When you do, this is what you're going to see. It's going to say saving. And this message will stay here as long as it takes to save the song from the memory of your keyboard out into that thumb drive. And this could take... Uh, 15 seconds, it could take 30 seconds. It all depends on how long is your song, okay? So you just sit here, watch your screen, and it will continue to say saving until it's done. So what I wanna do now is I've made a little video of me doing that so you can see this live. So here's the setup. I'm going to assume that I have stored my song in user three song. So in the internal memory of my keyboard, user three is the song that I've stored my music into. And I wanna save it out into the thumb drive into song 017. So I'm kind of assuming I've already stored 16 songs on my thumb drive and I want to save this in position 17, okay? So user three is the song where I've stored it in the memory of my keyboard, and song 017, that's the position on the thumb drive that I want to save it into. So here then is a video of my screen, and I'll, I'll walk you through it. In this next short video, what I'm going to do is take a song that I have recorded into memory and I'm going to transfer it out to my USB thumb drive. I've just shown you this in the slides. Now you're going to watch me do it live. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm reaching out and I'm going to press and hold the function button. Ready? Click. Hold. Now what I need to do is use the category button and I'm going to click through it. Click, 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 click. There, that's what I want. Save SMF. And by the way, SMF stands for Standard MIDI Format. 
So technically what I'm doing is I'm taking this song that I've recorded and stored in the memory of my keyboard and I'm going to convert it into a MIDI file as I'm in the process of saving that out onto my thumb drive. Okay, so I'm looking at Save SMF and I'm going to reach out and I'm going to press the Execute button. Ready? Click. Now what it wants me to do is tell it which of the songs I want to send out to the thumb drive. Now in my little example, I'm using the rotary wheel and as you see I can sit here and dial through all of my user songs and there are 10 of them. I'm going to select user song number three. That's where I've just recorded my song. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is press the Execute button. Ready? Click. Now what it wants to know is where do you want to store this out on your thumb drive? And it can be from song 001 all the way up. I'm using the, my rotary dial. I can go all the way up to, let's just see how far I can go, 100 and then it starts over. So I can store 100 of my own songs that I've recorded. I can store 100 of those out into this thumb drive. Just for this little demonstration, I've decided I'm going to store it in song position 017. So I'm going to pretend that I've already stored 16 songs on this thumb drive and this is the 17th song, so I'm storing it out at it's, it's, uh, song 017. And now to make that happen, I press the Execute button. Ready? Click. And it says, are you sure? Do you want to save it? Is it okay? And I'm going to press the Execute button. Ready? Click. Now, this can take a few seconds. It could be, I don't know, 15 to 30 seconds. And I just sit here and I stare at my screen. And so what's happening? Oops, it's done. So what it did is it converted my song into a MIDI file. And then it stored that MIDI song out there on my thumb drive at position song 017. And then it comes back to where I began with the Save SMF. And if I wanted to store another song, I would start all over and repeat exactly what you've seen. So that's the process of taking a song that I've got stored in my user memory, converting it to MIDI, and saving it out onto that thumb drive. And I can store a hundred of those songs on this thumb drive. So I thank you for watching this. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, leave me a comment. Until I see you again on YouTube, thanks for watching and be well.